Hi again, it's time for more Fire Emblem. We're picking up where we left off with our 0% growth hard 3 with the Archer Avatar, dropping right into Chapter 1. This is my first playthrough of the game, so I don't have any post-game content or DLC unlocked, like no Rainbow Potion, uh, no stat boost items in the shop. So I'm sure this run will die like it walled eventually, but I'm going to go as long as I can. And uh, reclassing also, I think, is limited uh, until you finish the game in some sort of way. So this is totally vanilla, hard three. And we've got reclassing available in the preparations menu. When I first watched this game being played, I thought that was really stupid. But it grew on me very quickly with the way that slots are limited and the levels of complexity it adds to the routing of each chapter. Now, our Jagan in this game is named Eren, and reclassing him to Draco Knight is pretty much required for what I need to do. Other than that, I want as many ranged units as I can get, including changing Brody to a mage, since he's useless as a cavalier anyway. And conversely, Gordon is actually the best cavalier we can get at base stats. Very strong 9 strength and defense, and enough speed and HP not to get one-rounded. Drow goes reclassed to a fighter, because it's the only class that allows him to survive a round of combat with the enemy barbarians. And all the items we lost from units that left us after the prologues have been transferred to the convoy, which is unusually generous, especially after I just finished Thracia for the first time, where the game is just cruel for no reason and loves to take things away from you. Now, we need to uh, access the armory here in the preparations as well, and buy an axe for Drog, because we didn't have any, and then sell everything else that we can in order to forge plus four might onto Eren's Silver Lance. And the reason for that will be very obvious when it happens. So just a bunch of uh, steel weapons, iron weapons left over from the prologues that we can sell off for money here. I needed 12,100 for the forging, and then I wanted another 540 to buy a hand axe during the chapter. And just head down to the forge. And you can only forge one weapon for uh, per map, which is uh, a nice limitation on it, but forging is still really powerful. So we put that plus four on his silver lance. And I decided to name this lance Marcus. I don't think I need to explain that. Alright, let's get into the action. And we're going to set up a familiar formation here. Where our lowest defense frontliners uh, only have single exposure to draw in the first enemy and then the edge units will draw on the remaining enemies instead of having anybody have to fight two enemies and then die. I was planning to just reset until Marth got a crit with the rapier, but Eren actually got a Steel Lance crit first for some reason. Whatever, it's ultimately the same outcome. Just needed one of these barbarians to die on enemy phase, turn one. I don't, I don't like doing that. I really don't. I wish I didn't have to, but that's kind of what we're signing up for here. So, and that's the only rigged crit in this chapter, so life goes on. Whatever. The rest of this player uh, this player turn is just math. Adding up the numbers to get kills. And, you know, as always, we're seeing the value of ranged units on hard three. Dishing out chip damage without getting countered. It's super valuable. Even when it's Brody as a mage doing nothing. In particular, that one, the... Rhodey's fire plus a hit from Marcus zeroes out that Barbarian quite nicely. One other reclass worth mentioning is Cecile into a Cleric, because she doesn't get doubled by these Barbarians, but she does get one shot. Uh, so yeah, she just is terrible as a Cavalier. She can't contribute to the game anymore, so I just made her a healer. That's nice. Because we lost Riss after the prologue, so if, if you want to heal on these first few turns, you're going to have to do it yourself. We positioned Gordon to lure in that archer, so we can get things moving along here. It probably seems a waste to use another Marcus on this thief, but he has 11 sword and way too much speed for anyone else on my army to deal with him quickly, since we lost Merrick, we lost Athena, we lost Ogma, we lost our Pegasus Knights. So that was really my, my one option to get rid of him. Make sure we don't... Uh, or we want to pull this Barbarian with Marth, but not anyone else. And we can finish off this Archer with whoever, it doesn't matter. Did it with Gordon, fine. Get some Lance weapon experience. It would be nice to get the D-rank Lances, so I can use Javelins on Gordon, but I don't know if that's going to happen. 
And then we get Drow moving over to this cave to, uh, if you wait on that cave tile, you get a bullion worth 5,000 gold, which is awesome. And then I picked up this hand axe here because I am a Fire Emblem 7 fanboy and figured I might need a hand axe. When, when do you not need hand axes, right? Why not? Alright, so Marth pulls in this Barbarian. And then uh, we'll toss him a heal because we're going to need him at full health here in a little bit. He's going to head up to this village and give us a new unit, another healer named Militia. Who comes with D-rank staff, so she can use this, uh... Did she come with a men's staff? I guess we... Oh, you get another men's staff for completing this chapter. But anyway. We finish off this Barbarian. And, uh, for some reason, Marth is the only character who can visit villages in this game. It's really stupid. I ended up getting the bullion with, uh, with Eren, but whatever. So... Because Marth has to be the one to visit that village, uh, we end up just doing a lot of running around here. some A couple of slow turns, but it, it gives me some free time to heal everybody up, so fine, whatever. Now, I just could not come up with a better way to deal with this segment, because all these enemies are linked, and even, you know, standing on that fort isn't going to save anybody's life, because there's two archers back there. So, uh, you just... I really don't know what to do, except using the save point until I get Marth to dodge one of these barbarians. At least I don't have to force a critical. That feels a lot worse. Uh, farming a dodge with a swordsman against barbarians is much more in the spirit of Fire Emblem than, uh, than waiting for a crit. And as always, it's nice that the enemies favor damage over retaliation, because all my instincts tell me that these barbarians are going to attack with their hand axes at range, but they don't. They're more interested in dealing damage, so they come in with their silver axes instead, and Marth's able to counter. Now, we continue to see, uh, like before, the benefit of ranged units on this difficulty. Being able to chip these guys down without getting countered is the only reason any of this is even possible. So we're using pretty much everybody that we can. Uh, we're going to need Gordon and Draug near... Is it Draug or Drog? Anyway, he needs to be uh, high enough to take a Barbarian hit with the Silver Axe, so... Full or full minus one. Now, when you cross some threshold on the map there, it plays a little cutscene with Ogma, blah blah blah, who cares. So Draw and Gordon are going to hold this choke with single exposure at one range, so that's good. But this archer behind them is still a huge pain that I just couldn't figure out how to deal with. Because he's going to kill anybody who fights a barbarian at two range. Until I came up with Marcus, and that solved that problem right away. So this is why I needed plus four might on that Silver Lance to one-shot this archer, and he even crits. That's the true spirit of Marcus right there, baby. Now, as usual, Aaron would die if the AI were smart enough to hit him twice. He's got multiple exposure at one range, but because the AI is dumb, they went for Drog first, and nobody died. Ryan misses his shot there because he is a constant disappointment to me but the rest of the army is able to clean this guy up. If you were expecting me to fight this boss, I'm sorry. But there's just no way, outside of grinding for a crit with Marcus. But even then, it wouldn't save me a turn with this setup, because Marth would still be one square away from seizing. If I had reset for that dodge earlier with Gordon instead of Marth, with like 85% hits from both enemies, and I did that over and over again until I got a Marcus crit on the boss, then maybe I could have saved one turn, but come on, that's, that's dumb. 
So I went for a little extra healing EXP and weapon EXP here on Militia. And Cecile as well. It, it's hard to know if... Oh, I, I didn't. Okay. I wasn't sure if I should go for, you know... Is it worth using the heal charges just for EXP and weapon EXP? Or am I going to need the charges more for, like, real uses later on? I had no way of knowing. So I just kind of did whatever. And then we seize. Let's move on to the next chapter. We get a men's staff for free. And I will see you there.